This is volume number three. Uh, some people who have actually bought an Andy Warhol painting on the blockchain. So I guess buying a ridiculously beautiful and expensive art on the blockchain. Volume three! I do apologize as we're about to share this with you. Uh, we did cut out the first minute of the interview. My bad, uh, apparently gigabyte cards are only so big, but uh, I hope you enjoy the interview. Uh, Marcelo, I really appreciate the time. By Cenus, what a great idea, and what a totally overlooked space and niche. Uh, this is uh, live. This is Tio and the Arcane Bear. I've got an exciting guest for you today. This is Marcelo of Mycenas. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure. Kind of a difficult company name to drop in, but a very, very cool idea. They've been tokenizing art on the blockchain. Uh, they originally uh, basically tokenized an Andy Warhol piece, so very exciting uh, lead from one of our friends. H how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? A beautiful day in Singapore. I, c I can't complain. Um, We'll, we'll just dive right into it. You guys have an amazing team. Uh, you yourself, uh, from what I was looking at here, you are the co-founder, the CEO uh, of Serial Entrepreneur, uh, originally from Argentina. You worked with Barclays Investment Bank as well as the no right. National Australian Bank, Credit Suisse, and Jefferies International. So you've got a great background. I guess uh, let's just dive right in. How, how did you kind of come up with wanting to tokenize art and what was it like um, tokenizing an Andy Warhol piece? Uh, so it was a bit of a journey of discovery. So my background is not from in, in the art market. My background is in banking and technology. Yeah. That's where I built most of my expertise in my career. And so I stumbled upon Bitcoin as almost everyone in the crypto space at some point. In my case, it was five years ago and I was fascinated by uh, what the technology uh, behind Bitcoin could do. And coming from a banking background, uh, the moment I understood how uh, blockchain uh, could make it so uh, Please do not mind a little cutoff. Okay, so one of the potential roadblocks with uh, buying art on the blockchain is the fact that artists, or well, people that buy the art usually want to take a look at it. H how do you guys plan to kind of work around the ownership of art and, and al allow people to come actually view it? Yeah, so I mean, not everyone uh, who buys art, they buy it to enjoy it personally. There's a lot of people who see art as an investment. So for them, not having physical access to the artwork is not so much of an issue, but obviously for the rest, they, they sort of need to feel the connection. There's some, some people, there's evidence of surveys that indicate that people only invest in artworks that they feel a connection with, that they mm. feel that the artwork is sort of aligned with their personal values and, and morals and so on. Uh, so for those uh, who need to feel this connection but obviously they, they can't physically access the artwork all the time so we have a number of things that we want to do to sort of help them build that connection one is to once we have enough artworks in in the same physical space to organize exhibitions and uh, obviously this is not something that we could do in the short term but once we have more volume in the platform what we could do is anyone who is an owner of a fraction of a painting or a sculpture that's in the same area where we're going to do an exhibition they get a free ticket and they can bring their plus ones and friends and enjoy the art and show it off to the friends and family right so so that's kind of uh, has some limitations because obviously you need to have be relatively close to where the exhibition is going to be held. The other thing that we want to do is allow people to um, obtain 3D uh, uh, printed replicas that we can produce using uh, high-tech 3D scanners uh, combined with obviously 3D printers. So people who want to hang it on the wall and, and enjoy it and show it off to friends. Uh, in the past it was almost impossible to do with with machines, we, you had to get a professional artist to create a copy. Today you can use technology and you can have an almost identical copy of the original yourself. Uh, obviously with a blockchain hash that proves that you are the owner and you can verify with a mobile app that scans maybe a QR code and shows how much you own and you can tell your friends, hey, I actually own this. Right. Um, and then the third avenue that we want to explore, it doesn't require any physical printing, is has to do with virtual reality. So we are in conversations with companies that have uh, fully functional VR headsets with software that helps uh, and allows people to create virtual galleries. Oh, wow. uh, so, so anyone who owns, say, a fraction of a painting through Mycenas, they could potentially create their own gallery 
and they, they can hang and arrange the paintings and sculptures around in any way they want and invite their friends to enjoy them. Cool, that's a really unique way to, to look at things. Yeah. So one of the other ideas that comes up in, in these types of um, collectible art pieces is authentic authentication of yeah. uh, and the validity of the uh, originals themselves. Do you guys plan on integrating any uh, authentication of the originals in, in the storage places? Well? Right, so we, we're not, we don't have plans to use technology to solve the, the authenticity issue. We don't feel that the technology device is available today. They provide a degree of certainty that would be better or safer than relying on the experts in the market today. So, so in, the, in the process of going from analog to digital, we still rely on the same sort of counterparties and experts and, and processes that uh, companies like uh, Sotheby's, or Christie's, or even galleries rely on. So you still say, if, if you're evaluating a Picasso, and a Picasso has the, the state in France, the experts in Picasso's, they are in France, and you need to use them. If you don't use mm. the same experts that the auction houses use, then then your your validity will be challenged and, and trust will diminish. So we still rely on the same traditional processes. We're not innovating in that space. We may do there's companies building smart tags, another type of like nano ink technology that you, know, you can spray without altering the the visual side of the painting and, and proof of authenticity. It's not quite there yet. Right. It's quite experimental, but I don't know, when the time comes and the tech is ready, we may adopt it. Um, so for the liquidity of the, uh, the art token itself, um, let's say someone is invested in a painting. If the, liquid the liquidity for these paintings are thin, is it harder to convert, convert the token uh, and the investment back to, to, uh, to other owners? Well, so I mean, we certainly don't expect uh, tokens in, in paintings to be as liquid as, say, Apple or Google stock, because you know, the market cap is, is smaller. I mean, it's not a, a mass market type of investment. It's more of a niche. Uh, type of investment, so uh, trading volume is not going to be super high, uh, but there still be more liquidity than there is today. So, for instance, if you purchase a painting today, uh, typically you will need to sit on the investment for five to ten years, and then you will need to find a single buyer willing to take the full ownership. So that's right. quite challenging and hard to do, and that's why art is not transacted so frequently. Um, when, when you're talking about uh, being able to choose the dollar value of your investment. Uh, then it's a lot easier to find a match. So with our exchange, we believe that we have some moderate trading activity and we, we may go from investors having to wait five to 10 years to maybe a few days to a few weeks. Right, so you're actually decreasing some of the times of the yes. liquidity for the piece itself. So um, to your, according to your guys' LinkedIn, certain team members, including uh, yourself, uh, the CEO, correct? Yes. Yeah, the CTO are still working in uh, the DX markets. Um, it's kind of unclear how these two projects kind of align. Can you tell us a little bit more about that as well? Right. So, the, as I explained earlier in the interview, so the X Markets was the name of the company that oh, I originally, originally founded. Okay. And then we pivoted into Mycena. So, essentially, Mycena, in a way, inherited or obtained the entire tech and team from the X-Markets. So ah, okay. the X-Markets as a company still exists, but only in name and jurisdiction. It's been unwinded and it has no employees and no business. Perfect. So, uh, so before we started the conversation as well, you had said that the Andy Warhol piece that you guys uh, originally purchased uh, or uh, part of is, is being held in Switzerland by Christie's. Right. Can you tell us a little bit more about how those services work and, and what type of, um, I guess, insurance is, is available? Yeah, so so just to clarify, so we, we Mecenas did not purchase the, the painting. What we did is we entered an agreement with the original owner of the painting, which is a gallery based in London, the Diani Art Gallery, and they um, sold a percentage of the painting to investors through our platform. So now the, there's a new legal entity, it's a company incorporated with, with the sole purpose of uh, holding this Andy Warhol painting in the balance sheet. And through this company, which tokenizes its own shares, so, so the owners of the tokens, uh, directly become owners of the uh, shares in the company which owns the painting. So it's kind of an indirect proxy into owning the painting. So the largest shareholder, the largest owner of the painting is the original gallery, which still owns uh, close to 70%. The other 31.5 is owned by token holders. And the largest shareholder is mandated to uh, 
provide uh, safe storage for the LPs, which uh, it has to be paid a year in advance to the art storage facility in Switzerland, mm -hmm. and insurance. So the insurance has to cover in excess of 100% of the value of the painting, which at the last uh, time it was sold, which was through Mycenaeus, it was 5.6 million US dollars. Brilliant. Um, and so for the, for the future plan of the platform, can you tell us some of the other uh, pieces of art or artists that you guys are looking at and, and how you plan to ma market and share those ideas with the community? Yeah, so I can't disclose exactly the name of the paintings Fair. because we are bound by confidentiality and obviously we also have competition around. So, uh, But what I can disclose is that the value range of the upcoming artworks is going to be between 2 to $10 million uh, in the short term and then we may go into the upper bracket 10 to 20 in the in the medium to long term and the artists are going to be well known instantly recognizable artists that even people who don't have an expertise within the art market they would immediately be able to relate to the likes of Monet, Picasso and so on and we are planning to uh, start getting more aggressive with the auctions in 2019 uh, in 2018, we decided that we wanted to make sure the platform worked correctly, that we provided enough time for investors to educate themselves, to learn about the art market, to learn about tokenization and blockchain technology. So we, we sort of, from that perspective, we uh, had a very successful year because we were able to launch and unsuccessfully sell the first artwork. And we sort of now working on scaling up the companies so that we can take more investors, more artworks, and, and expand to other regions. So, one, for instance, one market that we we haven't really touched yet is the U.S. because of the SEC approach, right. being quite aggressive with ICOs and so on. So, we wanted to be conservative. We didn't want to get in trouble. We don't need thousands of investors to sell one painting. With a few hundred, we we covered. Uh, so we, uh, following advice from our legal team, we decide to exclude the U.S. in the first auction. That makes sense. So with the platform itself, can you tell us a little bit about the token and the, the, the blockchain that you guys are using? Are you writing in Ethereum or is it your own specified blockchain? Yeah, so we, we're based on Ethereum for now. So we have two blockchains. So one is the internal one that we use to track ownership of each of the specific paintings. So for each painting that we tokenize, we have a, a, a new ERC20 token that's linked to the shares in the company that owns the, the painting. Uh, and that's run privately for now because mostly regulation constraints. Yeah. We, 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 we can't still sort of constitute this type of company uh, using a fully decentralized platform. Then the second blockchain that we use is also Ethereum and it's a public Ethereum network that everyone knows and uses. And in that network we have uh, our own token called ART, ART. And it's an ERC20 token that um, basically powers all of the smart contracts that we use in the Ethereum network. The most important and significant one is the Dutch auction mechanism that we use for price discovery, uh, processing bids and settling the transactions in, in art. Nice. So the art market is actually a pretty exciting place. We witnessed this year the sale of a Basquiat piece for over $110 million to its Korean owner that he wants to potentially send to space with Elon Musk. Um, can you tell us, I guess, a little bit more about the niche art industry for those that aren't aware uh, how, how big this this market is? Yeah, I mean, the art is always, as many assets, very hard to value. Like, a lot of people come to me and ask me, why is this painting worth $5 million and not? 5,000 or 50 million dollars, right? And and it has to do with scarcity and 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 basic economic supply and demand, right? So I mean, artists who have been trendsetters who created new styles like you know Picasso, um, they and they passed away. The the so the notion is that there's only going to be so many uh, artworks right. ever in existence. So with a fixed supply and a potentially ever increasing demand um, that makes artworks to uh, trend upwards over the lifetime of the artwork. So, so typically uh, when people look at art as an investment they don't look at getting rent or fixed income from, from the piece of art. Uh, they don't look at necessarily speculate short term because of the lack of liquidity and the slow turnaround of the pieces. They look for long term wealth preservation or, or creation. Right, so typically if you invest in the Picasso today you know that it's going to be quite safe over a five to ten year horizon. 
Right. So I guess with that, with leading down that trend, um, if there is troubles in the regular equity markets, um, do you see a correlation of the uh, potential downtrend in the stock markets also relating to uh, art pieces as well, or do does art kind of withstand that breakdown in, in traditional equity markets as well? Well, so typically, um, art was said to be uncorrelated to the equity markets, but in the last crisis in 2008, we we you know we noticed a correlation in in. The most popular art funds they went down in price almost with a three to six months delay, but it sort of followed a similar curve. And so it depends on the type of art. So so art can be uncorrelated to other uh, asset classes like equities, bonds, commodities, but it depends on the type of art. So you have uh, old masters who are kind of uh, very stable, lots of data points because it's, they've been transacted over centuries. Then uh, they have like post-war, modern art, contemporary art. They all have different behaviors, and this could be comparable to even to the stock market. So one thing is to try, say, uh, tech company stocks, like Facebook, Google, Netflix, Amazon, and completely different to trade banking stocks. Right? So art is an asset class in its own right, and as an investor, you need to have some basic education about the fundamentals of different type of art. Okay, so I guess just for fun, can you give us a, a walkthrough of the process of, of what it looks like to operate on the platform and, and to potentially become a, an, an owner of one of these paintings as well? Yes, I mean the process is actually as an investor is really simple. So you sign up and you have to provide your basic uh, identity information uh, to pass KYC. So KYC is not your customer, which is a financial regulatory policy that yeah. we need to comply with. It was basically, we need to know who is going to invest and where, where the money comes from if it's a significant amount of money. If it's below, say, $25,000, we don't need to prove where the funds come from. So you just sign up, you complete the forms, which takes two to three minutes. Uh, then our uh, compliance officer will go through it uh, and approve it or request more information. Uh, the process is very similar to signing up to a crypto exchange. Right. Uh, once you, your profile is approved, then you, you can log in, you can browse a catalog of all the artworks that are up and coming. Um, if there's uh, an auction live, then, then you'll see it at the top of the screen. You'll see the, the price, you'll see the, the bidding activity, and then you can choose to invest and choose how many shares you want to purchase and what price you want to pay. And then obviously before you can invest, similar to a crypto exchange, you need to deposit your cryptocurrency, which could be Bitcoin, Ether, or our own token, ART, and then you can use those funds to invest. Then the auction would last for a number of weeks, depending on demand, and one, once the auction finishes, then the, the smart contract actually determines the, the winners, whoever sort of uh, placed bids with the highest price would take priority mm. and then if you were lucky and you, know, you managed to purchase a number of shares then the smart contract itself would distribute the, the payment to the seller and allocate the shares to you and then you, when you log in you can see your portfolio with all the shares you own and the price changes. Um, so here, here's one that we, th we think you might get a lot. Um, how come you chose the, the company name Myce Mycenas? So Mycenas is the surname of Gaius Mycenas, which is the, the patron of the arts. So he was an advisor to uh, an emperor during the Roman Empire times. And he, he's regarded as the patron of the arts because he, at the time where almost no artist could make a living by, you know, charging for, for you know, playing instruments or right. painting. Uh, he, he was a very wealthy individual and he used his own wealth to basically subsidize all the artists and allow them to have you know, enough money to m make a good living, shelter food, so that they could basically be artists full time. So he is sort of, he's regarded as one of the first people who used wealth to, to help foster the culture of artists and, and sharing and so on. So we, we chose the name because we want to be the modern time Mycenas where we help artists by making them reach out to a global network of investors who want to support the artists, want to invest in the work that they do or they've done in the past and help them raise money so they can continue creating art, which is what they want to do. So I guess with that in mind, um, you have ideas to uh, like a, a I guess a further vision to uh, potentially help other other artists. Absolutely, that aren't as well known. absolutely. The, the reason we so sort of are currently focusing on on expensive artwork is because that's the current gap in the market that we can sort of uh, 
close and apply the technology to. The cost of the structuring and investment today is very expensive, so we couldn't, it wouldn't be feasible or scalable to do crowdfunding to raise, say, $5,000 for an artist. Right. It's way too expensive. The cost of the structuring doesn't go below 20000 per artwork. But as regulation eases down and blockchain becomes more mainstream and regulators feel comfortable with, with companies just relying on blockchain to do the whole transaction end to end, which is still not the case. Blockchain only sort of optimizes and makes certain areas more efficient. We still rely on lawyers, notaries, bank accounts, and right. so on. Hence the cost. So once all of that sort of goes away and we can be as efficient uh, executing functions transactions as we are today sending say WhatsApp messages which are ultra low cost or having a Skype phone call which doesn't cost any any money. When we can go into that level of efficiency with financial transactions, then we could be talking about tokenizing artists, tokenizing tokenizing future commissions of art for artists, say you want to start a career as an artist and you, you commit to produce say 50 artworks over the next three, uh, two years, then people could invest in, in that promise right. and they could get access to maybe purchasing some of the artworks at discount or enjoy them or maybe taking some profits if you manage to sell them. Yeah. So that's the economics for us to do that today are not there because of regulation, but that's our long-term ambition. Nice. So that, it kind of reminds me of uh, the Bowie Bonds, where he uh, um, turned his the, his future uh, writing in, into a, a kind of a, a stock market exactly. play as well. It uh, sounds great. So you guys have an astounding team, um, and a, a lot of you guys appear to be fintech related. Um, can you explain a little bit more about the process? Uh, how, how you guys choose the artworks? Is, is it mostly off recognizability and and the price point at this moment? Yeah. So I mean, the, the company is sort of half tech and half finance and art. So we have a dedicated art team. Uh, the, the art director is based in Singapore and we have two art experts in, in London. And we basically try to, at the beginning, be very conservative with the artworks that we choose. So we go for the ones who have very clear and easy to validate provenance. Provenance is basically like the CV or resume of, a, of an artwork. It shows every time it was transacted, all the exhibitions that it's been part of, if it's included in any catalog that's you know, reputable, it will show in there. And, and that's how you validate that a piece is authentic or, or not by looking at the provenance and looking at all the documentation. So we, we want to play it extremely safe because we, we don't have the reputation of Christie's and Sotheby's. We are a startup, we are a new player, so we, we can't afford to make any mistakes right. or have any, any, anything fake on the platform that will completely destroy the company. So, so we start with uh, the, the basic check of does it have impeccable provenance? If the answer is no, then, then we discard it. And then the ones who pass the initial check, then we look at the fundamentals. Is the artist uh, well known or well known enough so that the, the public could relate to it? And uh, if you need to do a research about the artist, then you're not going to be as excited as investing in an artist that you immediately recognize because it makes headlines. Like yeah. Basquiat makes, makes headlines, or Kusama makes headlines, and Banksy, and so on. So those type of artists are the ones that we prefer at the beginning. Right. Once we build a reputation and also we educate our audience, they become more sort of well-versed in artists and, and periods and, and type of trends, then we're going to start expanding into lesser known artists. In particular, uh, in Asia, there's an up and coming sort of trend of artists in Indonesia, in, in, in Korea and Japan uh, that don't have kind of the world stage as other artists do, but we want to help them go there. Right. You know, it's brilliant. I think you guys have done a great job. And focusing on uh, this niche is, is really interesting as well because I think a lot of people overlook it in the, uh, the value asset yes. space as well, which is extremely valuable for, for those that aren't paying attention. Um, I guess this, this brings us to the end. Is there anything else you'd like to leave us with about um, I've seen this where to find you guys, how to, how to learn more about you as well? Uh, well, so, yes, so we, we have a small but growing community uh, of people. Uh, I personally try to take time uh, every day to talk to them so typically I connect with my community on telegram we have a telegram channel if you go to our website mycinas.co.co there's a link on the upper right hand uh, side of the screen uh, that takes you to telegram you can you can talk to me you can talk to the other community members who are very excited and very eager to reply to questions even though 
uh, they do it for free just because you know, they, they like what we're doing. So that's one way of engaging. We also post content on social media, Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, the usual. Nice. Uh, so feel free to come, join us if you like what, what we do, ask questions, mingle, learn about art, learn, learn about asset organization, blockchain. It's all very exciting. Yeah. We take feedback from people. We are in the process of changing the way we do certain things based on feedback that we received. Uh, from users who participated in the first auction so we're very much an open company we embrace decentralization and democratization so this is your chance to get your voice heard nice marcelo it's a uh, brilliant thank you for sharing your time with us thank today you. um i appreciate it so check out my scenes you guys can find them on telegram and we'll make sure all those links are down below this is teal with the arcane bear and it's been another beautiful day in singapore Thank you so much. It's my pleasure, I'm glad. Okay, so that was a, a great interview we just had with Mycenas. They were able to tokenize an Andy Warhol painting on the blockchain. Fascinating uh, building here, the Verizon sign. It's raining, so I gotta find myself a taxi. I do also want to apologize because the beginning of that interview got cut off because can, only so many gigabytes on a card nowadays. But hey, we do our best.